Okay, so what we're going to cover now is how to configure the actual game inside of itself. And uh, it's on boot up, and what's happening is that we have the main unit uh, connected to the main screen through our 2-in-1 video card. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into test mode. First we're going to configure the Sega boards, then we're going to go into the actual game board itself and configure it there. I'm configuring for the Sega uh, Derby Owners Club Frankenstein version, which is the two-seat version. So the two-seat version, the way it works is uh, you have to configure it for four-player. We make a mod to the system, and you can run with only two players. It's pretty cool. All right, so in the undocumented parts of the manual, my favorite, meaning there's no manual, is that this is service and test. I'm on the main unit, okay? So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and go into test mode. Okay. So what happens is I'm going to go ahead and scroll through the menu all the way down to system assignments. Going into, into it, if you notice, it says, all right, cabinet type needs to be one player. If you change it to four player, basically the buttons won't work the way they're supposed to, and you'll have to enter the, the setup through the uh, right after the Naomi screen. So try to do yourself a favor, and this is recommended uh, in the manuals. Advertise sound on means when you see the Naomi screen power up, it makes a sound. Monitor type, Derby Owners Club uses horizontal. Now Sega's really awesome because see, they support vertical and horizontal. However, Let's just give a caveat. Their vertical is top right to bottom right, meaning that's how they run their verticals. Everybody else is left to bottom left. So creating a universal cabinet is kind of a pain, but it can be done. All right, so horizontal and, and then service type is common. So here's, you can do individual or common. I've had problems changing, just sort of, you know, monkeying around with the different settings going to individual and getting back into the BIOS, which requires removing the battery and letting it sit there for about a half hour and come back, reconfigure everything, and the battery on this is, you'll break something getting it out. So do yourself a favor, just make sure it's common. All right, so we've covered the system assignments. Now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and go into the game test mode, which is in the selection right down here, okay? And what's happening is we have two boards which are in sync, okay? So you're going to see some duplicity, which is kind of an interesting phenomenon with the Derby Owners Club. The two uh, proje rear projection TVs that shipped with the unit uh, had, had output, so you would see this on each big screen. Whereas with the 2-in-1 video card and the uh, HDMI upscaler I use, it's different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the game assignments. Now, this menu changes. Let me tell you what happens. Uh, this menu is different than what you will see on the satellites. It only handles so much. It's a very limited, low-end menu from the game board. And so I'm going to go into the game assignments, and I'm going to make sure that it is USA 6R. That means that it excludes, like, a Hong Kong Oaks from the playlist. Now, there are some different race modes. Let's see if we can get those to focus for you. Hong Kong 6R, USA G1, Hong Kong G1, USA 6R, Hong Kong 6R. So, these are covered in the manuals. They are different races. If you want to put it into tournament mode, then what you can do is you can go in here and switch it to G1. And you only have to change it on the main unit. So, made a mistake there. I put it for five player. I'm going to put it back to four. I'm going to go into race mode. And if I want to put it in tournament mode or just G1s, it only goes through the G1s. And here's the best part. Your horses do not get a, get a race written to them. So you build up your horses, you have your tournament, everybody brings in their big horses, and it spits your card out after every race. Probably want to have them all built up before you get into a tournament, so that way you're not burning everybody's time like I did at my first tournament where I was training. <laughs> so I hope that helps. All right, so we're on USA. That's tournament mode. I'll put it back in 6R mode. All right. Back to the exit. And then I'll exit again. 
so I validated that I've got four players, and then I also uh, validated it to where it has a one. It's the system assignment is one player horizontal. Okay, so that covers how to configure the uh, main unit, and what I'll do now is try to get to the. I'll I'll use the two in one video card and boot up on half main unit and then half satellite system. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, and plug in the two in one video card. I really like it for troubleshooting reasons. I have it plugged into a satellite, okay? Uh, just one side of it to this cable. And then I have the main unit plugged in here. And so that leaves the main unit videos. Let's see if we can get that up close instead of all the wires. There we are. Two videos. I've only got one plugged in. And that's going to split the screen. So I'll power it up and we'll be right back in a second. Okay, so we're in the boot up phase, and this is what a, uh, this is Rev's, uh, let's see, what is this, Rev D, right. And so one of the tips I can give you is, right here it says 330, I don't know if you can see that. That means it's a Rev D card. That's one way to tell if you're running Rev D. The other way is if the home screen where it says Derby Owners Club, at the right bottom of that logo, it'll say EXTM, that means Rev D. So, here we go. It's a Rev D cart while we're waiting, running on a Rev C main unit. Yes, that's possible. Uh, it won't give you any extra advantage, but what it does do is, uh, interestingly enough, the cartridges are what control all of the gameplay, right? So all the main unit is doing is making sure everything stays in sync and the horses get shown up on the scoreboard. But the satellites are actually what drive the system, so it's backward of what it normally is. All right, so we talked about we're going to go ahead and go into the satellite. And the way we go into the satellite is Sega's undocumented uh, buttons, right? If you remember, pointed this out. Here we go. I'm going to go into test mode. That's going to lock up the screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go into the same area of system assignments. I don't know if you can see that if we're close enough. So I'll move up here. Okay, system assignments, right? So I go into system assignments, and remember what we're looking for here. This is a satellite. Is you want to have one player in the cabinet up top. Advertise sound on is optional. Monitor type horizontal and service type must be common. Uh, kind of something funny is when you freeze up one of the satellites in this mode, the main unit starts creating graphics in different formats. It's kind of funny. So right now, what's happening is that. Uh, it's confused. It doesn't know where the horses are. And it's sort of drawing the screen. You can tell how this is there. So I always like messing with it. You never know what you'll get on that screen when you put something in the test mode. So I'm going to go ahead and get out. Now what I'm going to do is go into the cart. So on a satellite system, what happens is this cart, you can buy any cart that runs on Naomi 1, right? And you can put it in, whether it's like, for example, the Derby Owners Club cabinets are really easy to convert to a Virtua Tennis cabinet. You can buy a Virtua Tennis card for almost nothing. And uh, let's see. So now I'm going to go into the game test mode. Okay, let's see how that works. Missed it. Go back. Okay, game test mode. There we go. Now we got a volume problem. <laughs> so let's try to turn the... I always like homemade videos. You can sort of, you know, run into something funny. I don't have any cats or dogs running around, so we're safe for the moment. I'll turn the volume down. It's not really required. Okay, so this is the satellite menu, right? And in the satellite menu, what you want to do is you want to go into the game assignment. So input, output, uh, output. The original satellites had an LED on top that lit. It was a winner. And uh, so you can hook up LEDs to that. Also, input test. Uh, input is your buttons. It's good for troubleshooting. And then the game assignments. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the game assignment. And this is where most problems occur. When people buy a cart off eBay, it's typically configured for eight players, right? So in the Frankenstein two player edition, you want to drop that to four. You drop it to four and you're going to work. But almost invariably, whether it's shipped or something like that, it typically winds up that this value has changed. Now, you'll have to set this value on all four satellites, your Naomi ones, or slaves, whatever you want to call them. And when you do that, it's going to make it in sync with 
the beginning of this video where we change the main unit to be four. So it has to be four, 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 and four. Otherwise, you get all kinds of node ID errors. And believe me, um, when we got those errors, uh, was it nine years ago when I upgraded and paid the $1,600 to Sega, they had no idea how to troubleshoot it. So I spent a week figuring that out. That's one of the reasons I'm making this video is to ease your pain. All right, so going right through the menu. I'm, gonna, I'm at four players, check. We talked about communication mode settings. Needs to be satellite. Again, don't change this value. Uh, you'll have to wait a long time to get back into the to the BIOS to make these changes. So here we go. All right, so we're out. And then uh, we have a card reader writer test. That's really cool. Um, you can hit it and uh, it'll print a uh, test card. I think I've got a sample over here on the workbench. Let me see if I can find that. Yeah, here it is. So it prints a test card through the card reader. It looks like this. So it says, hey, listen, this is a test print. No horse data is saved. Well, guess what? You can reuse that card. So um, that's really cool. You just pop it back in there. It writes over it. And uh, so this is another area of bookkeeping um, that people ask about. Now, this is the original equipment, so you can coin enable it. And bookkeeping tells you things like number of number of games, number of ga new game starts. In other words, you know, like did they press the, uh, the start button, the yellow button, right, to breed. And uh, it goes in and talks about all kinds of things, number of continued game. So it's pretty straightforward, right? Then you can do a backup data clear. Well, backup data clear clears out all of the information we just talked about, all right? So remember, if it's your own unit, that's cool. If you're getting free games on someone else's, you know, try not to mess all this up because it's really hard for the operator. And uh, just play your free games and let us catch you later. All right, so what's cool is you can say backup data clear and it will clear all the settings. I usually say no because I like to keep it. And then uh, we've, we've covered pretty much everything on the screen. I don't think it's there, but when you exit, people, oh, people ask, oh, how do I get it to save? Well, you need to exit the game cart cleanly. Do not reboot during a loading test now screen unless it's been locked up for quite some time. So uh, at this point, you will have to reboot the entire system. You can tell it's froze. And what I do is I have, uh, I have two power strips that I use. I buy brand new power strips uh, when I start working on something and the reason is that I don't want a five dollar power strip to stop me from getting a surge that would pop out a sixteen or an eighteen hundred dollar game from Sega because Sega games are expensive. So I go ahead and power them on. I'm going to reboot and so you can tell that I love this mess here. It looks like an alien type ship you know you're on but that's just fiber optic cable. And so I'm using the two-in-one video card uh, to troubleshoot. I would recommend that you do this too. It's really cool. It saves a ton of time. You're not moving a bunch of cables around. Uh, again, do not plug in anything while the system's on. That includes Fibercom, any of the power to anything. This is not a PC. This is an arcade game. So, you know, treat it like one. That means everything must be powered off before you plug in. If you do plug it in while it's on, it's called hot popping. And you don't want to hot pop your stuff. So hopefully this helps. And, uh, you know, that's uh, also, I guess, well, let's look on the bench here. I got a really cheap meter that I use from Radio Shack. And uh, I like it because uh, some people want to buy the whole kit and they'll order a meter. Get that in focus. I don't know what's going on here. But, uh, you know, basically they'll buy the whole meter. They'll buy the kits. And then uh, they might buy two two-in-one video cards, which is kind of cool. So maybe we'll cover that next on the YouTube channel is uh, how to plug in two two-in-one video cards. Who knows? We'll see what happens. All right, this is Ted signing off from ATXStables.com. See ya.